Hello, my name is Ian Burrell, and today I'm going to be talking about secondary fermentation products. Usually when you study fermentation, it's limited to sugar and yeast will give you alcohol and CO2. This is a rather oversimplified version, but no matter where you look in the textbooks and where you study, you always seem to get this one limited pathway. Always alcohol and CO2. And even though they dig deep into this pathway to understand all the mechanisms and the enzymes involved, it's usually limited to this pathway. But the secondary products are rarely covered and kind of ignored in many cases. But they're incredibly important, and as proof of concept, I'm going to bring up the Iron Brewer competition. Each contestant in the competition will receive the same ingredients and the same procedure that they must follow until the end. The only changes they are allowed to make are the choice of yeast and how they decide to ferment it. And the differences are stunning. There is such a wide variety of flavors and beers occurring that most of the people who come to try the beers uh, don't even know that they're drinking the same thing over and over and over again, with only minute changes to either fermentation procedure or the choice of yeast itself. And since they're all producing alcohol and CO2, clearly that's not what's making the difference. It must be the secondary fermentation products. The secondary, the secondary fermentation products also bring upon several nutritional benefits. They can improve intestinal tract health, they can improve the immune system, they increase bioavailability of nutrients, they reduce symptoms of lactose intolerance, decrease prevalence of allergies in susceptible individuals, they reduce the risk of certain cancers, and they can be probiotic. This, of course, depends on what microbes you're going to be using, and what you're fermenting. But for this presentation, we'll limit it to alcoholic fermentation, and uh, we're going to limit it to beverages in this case. So a secondary product is generated through fermentation, but is not attributed to the main biochemical pathway. It is responsible for flavor and nutrition in several fermented foods. One very common uh, fermented food is diacetyl. It's one of the more known products, but secondary products of fermentation. And it's responsible for that very buttery flavor of the oil they pour on your popcorn in a movie theater. Yeast will release it during fermentation and then reabsorb it towards the end. If you want to have more of this buttery flavor, you can cut it at that point by cooling the system or not giving them enough heat. Um, and there are other ways you can cut it so that they don't reabsorb the diacetyl. Usually that's considered a bad thing. I always thought it would be interesting to make one of those Harry Potter style uh, drinks that they call butterbeer, but maybe that's just me. Um, there are also esters which are quite studied. They tend to taste fruity, or they can taste like an industrial solvent. Um, so sometimes it's for better, sometimes for worse. And there are many ways of controlling or increasing and decreasing ester production during fermentation. Next we go on to lactones. They're a cyclic ester, and they're very abundant in nature. Um, they're part of neurotransmitters, antibiotics, anti-cancer drugs, hormones, and they're also produced during fermentation. And this is going to be particularly important, and we'll see why in a second. So why do we care? Sure, it's good for nutrition. Sure, it helps us control food quality by making things taste better, or worse. But there's a little bit more to it. It can also be dangerous. A pro-drug is a drug that is inactive until you ingest it. Once ingested, your body converts it into a drug or an active compound. Gamma butyrolactone is produced during fermentation and is a prodrug. Once inside the body, it's converted to gamma hydroxybutyrate acid, GHB. Maybe some people are already familiar with it. So the uh, in the 1990s, it was actually considered a recreational drug. And it was a lot of fun. They described it as a must-have for your party or just hanging out with your friends. The unique way of having fun. Um, and then these people were talking about how great it is and how awesome it is. And they're mostly talking about uh, how using it for sex. But in higher doses, it's also known as the date rape drug. It can be used in illicit and criminal activities. And it can have serious side effects. Other than unconsciousness, it can also cause convulsions and even death. So far, there are 226 cases to date. So in conclusion, the secondary fermentation products are often ignored, they influence food quality, and they can even threaten consumers' safety. Products such as GBL can be produced by anyone easily at home with over-the-counter products you could get from your grocery store. 
So secondary fermentation products are important, and that should be your take-home message. Here are my references. I'd like to thank Dr. Ngadi, RTA Wilton McVoy, primary and secondary reviewers, and the audience. Are there any questions?